Welcome to MedCrime. Today we shall be looking at patient positions that are commonly used in theater. A safe positioning of the patient for surgery is a shared responsibility of the surgeon, the anesthetist, and the operating room nurses. Although the ultimate objective is to provide optimal access to the surgical site, a consideration must be given to how positions may adversely affect the patient. Patient positioning involves properly maintaining the patient's neutral body alignment by prevention of hyperextension and extreme lateral rotation to prevent complications of immobility and injury. Let us start with the first commonest position, supine position. A supine position is also known as dorsal recumbent position and in this position, the patient lies flat on the back with the head and shoulders slightly elevated using a pillow. The legs are extended or slightly bent with the arms up or down. This position provides comfort in general for patients under recovery after some surgeries. Small pillows may be placed under the head. This position is commonly used in procedures that involve the anterior surface of the body, for example, abdominal area surgeries, cardiac surgeries, and thoracic area surgeries. A small pillow may be used to stabilize the head. The second positioning is Fowler's position. Fowler's position is also known as semi-sitting position, and in this case, the head of the bed is elevated 45 to 60 degrees and fallers position is known to have some variations that is low fallers position where the head of the bed is elevated by 15 to 30 degrees semi fallers positioning where the head elevation is 30 to 45 degrees and a high fallers position which is nearly vertical position fallers position promotes lung expansion and is therefore useful in patients with cardiac respiratory and neurological problems and is often optimal for patients who have a nasogastric tube for failing. Fowler's position is also used to prepare the patient for dangling or walking. It is usually used in surgeries that involve the neurosurgical cases or the shoulders. The third position is prone position. In prone position, the patient lies on the abdomen with their head turned to one side and hips are not flexed. This is the only bed position that allows full extension of the hips and knee joints. However, prone position is contraindicated for patients who have spine problems. It should only be used when patient's back is correctly aligned and is known to promote drainage from the mouth and useful for conscious patients or those patients who are recovering from surgeries that involve the mouth or the throat. In order to support a patient lying in prone position, you need to place a pillow under the head and a small pillow or a tower roll under the abdomen. Prone position is commonly used in patients who are undergoing neurosurgery cases and neck and spine surgeries. Lateral position. In lateral or side lying position, the patient lies on one side of the body with the top leg in front of a bottom leg and the hip and knees are flexed. Flexing of the top hip and knee and placing the leg in front of the body creates a wider triangular base for support and achieves greater stability. This position reduces lordosis and promotes a good back alignment. An increase in flexion of the top hip and knees provides a greater stability and balance. Another position is Sims position. Sims position is also known as semi prone position and is where the patient assumes a posture that is halfway between lateral and prone position. In this case, the lower arm is positioned behind the client and the upper arm is flexed at the shoulders and the elbow. The upper leg is 
more cuticle flexed at both the hip and the knee than the lower leg. Sims position prevents suspiration of fluids and is used for patients who are paralyzed because it reduces pressure over the sacrum and a greater truncatus of the hip. Sims position is often used for patients who are receiving enemas and occasionally those who are undergoing rectal examinations. And most pregnant patients will find it comfortable to sleep in this position. Lithotomy position. A lithotomy position is whereby a patient lies on the back with hips and knees flexed and thighs spread apart. This position is commonly used for vaginal examinations and childbirth. There are some modifications to lithotomy position which include a low lithotomy position, a standard lithotomy position, hemilithotomy position and high lithotomy position and lastly we have an exurated lithotomy position. Trendelenburg's position. A Trendelenburg position involves lowering of the head of the bed and raising the foot of the bed of the patient. The patient's arms should be tucked at their sides and Trendelenburg's position is known to promote postural drainage of the basal angulops. When a patient is in this position, you need to watch out for dizziness because some patients may require only a moderate tilt or a short time in positioning during postural drainage. Then we have a reverse Trendelenburg's position. A reverse Trendelenburg's position is a patient position whereby the head of the bed is elevated with the foot of the bed down. This is the opposite of Trendelenburg's position. This position is often used in patients with gastrointestinal problems and helps to minimize cases of esophageal reflux. It prevents rapid change of positions and promotes stomach emptying and prevents reflux for patients who have higher tohania. Then we have a knee chest position. Knee chest position can be in a lateral or prone position and in lateral knee chest position the patient lies on the side and the torso lies diagonally across the table and the hips and knees are flexed. In prone knee chest position, the patient kneels on the table and lowers their shoulders onto the table so that their chest and face rest on the table. This is adopted in cases of sigmoidoscopy without anesthesia. It can be embarrassing for some patients and this is the kind of position that is assumed for gynecological or rectal examinations. And then we have jackknife position. A jackknife position is also known as Kraske position. The patient's abdomen lies flat on the bed and the bed is scissored so that the hip is lifted and the legs and head are low. It is frequently used for surgeries that involve the anus, rectum, coccyx and certain back surgeries and adrenal surgeries. In jackknife position, the compression of inferior vena cava from the abdominal compression also occurs, which decreases venous return to the heart. This could increase the risk of deep venous thrombosis in these patients. We have a kidney position. In this kidney position, the patient assumes a modified lateral position whereby the abdomen is placed over lift in the operating table and bends the body. The patient is turned on their contralateral side with the back placed on the edge of the table and the contralateral kidney is placed over the break in the table or the kidney body elevator. The uppermost arm is placed in a gut rest at no more than 90 degree abduction or flexion. The kidney position allows access and visualization of the retroperitoneal areas.